This is episode 111. The ultimate deck podcast. Need a show about outdoor living? This is where it's at. With your host, Shane Chapman and Way Loren. Thank you for tuning in. Now let the show begin. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate deck podcast. Let's go. Do you think that the episode number today warrants making a wish? 2021. Er. 111. 111. You know when the clock <laughs> numbers all line up? But it's 1111. Make, I know, but until we get to 1111th episode, we don't have that option. Or we the really? numbers on, are, they're all the same. That's the point, I think, that, of that wish thing, isn't it? That's the rule. That's the rule. I just and, thought it was 1111. If you, it, so does 222 work? Or no, just 1111. Just when there's four digits, Why does all it the same. Four digits. I don't know. This is just, this is just what I need new. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Alderman Deck I Podcast. I didn't know that you could do it on any random. Oh, there's there's two numbers that are the same. Go ahead and make a wish. Well, most people can do high fives, right? Yes, Where I can. You put two fives together. I can, but I can also do four and a half. You can, and that's see, that's that's not a worthy. I feel cheated every time I high five. <laughs> right? Like, exactly. Come on, put all your effort in here. Jeez. I do usually with my right hand. If I high five with my right hand, you're getting all five. Oh yeah, and that's and I would do right hand. That's my. Yeah. That's normal. That's uh, normal. <laughs> so we're all back in the same room here for the first time in woo, woo, woo. weeks. Did first you know time that in the, the year. Average, and look, TC Dex is even excited that I'm back. See? Did you know that the average human has less than two legs? <laughs> yeah. The average human? Mm -hmm. Explain. This checks out. Because everybody has two legs? Right. Oh. Or some people have less than two, but so nobody has more than two. Right. So on average. That's nuts. The average person has 1.93 legs. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that's really that's really awesome, actually. So I'm just, I have less fingers. I'm average. You guys, you're the anomaly. Yeah, we're anomalies. We beat the average. We're you're above <laughs> we average. We are above. I've got two thumbs. I am above average. I'm above average. I can't wait to tell my wife. Yeah. You, know the you married I'm up. A, exactly. <laughs> I'm above average. <laughs> the things I'm better than most people in. I got two thumbs. See, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can give you two thumbs up. Yeah. That's. Funny. Okay, uh, yeah. How was Christmas, boys? It was good. It was it's fine. It was fine. <laughs> well, really, like, what do you do at Christmas? You see your family. Did anybody see any family? Yeah, I have. You know, <laughs> I live with two of them. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Answer the question. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> I saw my two family members. <laughs> I'm not paying a $2,800 ticket. Nice try, <laughs> yeah. Wade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it was, like, it was fine. I, I miss seeing my sister and the kids, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that was crappy, but... Uh, what I should have done was been a member of parliament. I could have been on a bunch of holidays. Right? Oh, yeah, right. Did you see that? Yeah. There's a few of them that were Yikes. Went yeah. <laughs> That's just bad PR. It turns out yeah. politicians have immunity just built in. Yeah, exactly. So they can do whatever the, they want. Yep. I mean, New when, plan in when 2021. You have more money than most people. <sighs> or when you write the rules. Or when you write the rules. Yikes. Anyways, so there was, there, was, a, good what, there was a guy in Ontario, the finance minister, yep. right? And then... He's done so though. But yeah, he, he resigned, resigned as soon as he got back. Then there was a guy from Saskatchewan and then there was a guy from Alberta. Where did the guy from Saskatchewan go? Palm Springs. The guy from oh, Saskatchewan was house. selling a house in California or something. Me right? too. Was his story. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you poor guy. Yeah. I had like, to go down there to sell my house. It's like, I don't. Right. You could have emailed that PDF. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you could pay yeah. someone Here's to my be argument. down there. I, like, and I. I actually don't think that these people should have to resign. I don't think they should lose their jobs over this because the law isn't that you're not allowed to travel. The law is that it it's only if it's necessary. So they think mm -hmm. it's necessary. Mm -hmm. My idea of necessary and their idea of necessary is different, obviously. But the part that makes it hard for everybody else is that when you come back, it's hard for people to quarantine for 14 days, right? So like if you work at the grocery store, you probably can't afford to have three weeks off in a row. Exactly. Right? And so, like, legally, you could go down there. You could fly down and see your family. Mm -hmm. But then when you come back, that's where it, like, that's the differentiator. But I even think. that's pretty, like, even though you're allowed to right now, it's pretty frowned upon sure by the general well, society and, right now and, and, and like, by politicians. Yeah, exactly. And by the guys making the rules. Yeah. So, yeah, like, did they do anything technically illegal? No. Mm -hmm. But pretty Pretty bad luck, though, when you're right. When, but do when you you're the guys that, telling yeah, everybody else what to do, stay in your house unless you absolutely have to get groceries or or beach, right? right. Beach is or okay. Beach. <laughs> beach is okay. You're outside. Not beach here, though, but like beach and like beach there. First, get in a tiny tube and fly across yeah, the country. I just <laughs> like, yeah. Anyways, I 
Yeah. No Christmas with your family members, but 300 people in a poor circulation tube. Yep. Down to the Bahamas? A OK. Yeah, we're going to the Caribbean. Yep. Anyways, what a bunch it, of jackasses. Like, it certainly looks bad on them, but yep. I, I, at no point in my life have ever. I thought that a politician was like the benchmark for great moral decisions. Right. Not one time have I been like, I should, I should be more like politicians. Hundred <laughs> percent. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, they're the ones they that away with cast the moral net onto <laughs> everybody do. else. Yes. yes, they to do. Tell you what's moral. But good. So in 2021, let's make the Ultimate Deck Podcast all about politics. Let's give up on this. Yeah, that sounds stuff. good. The I mean, ultimate. 110 episodes of about decking. You got to yeah, switch right? up at some exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. Things you would talk to people on your deck about. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's risky, though. Hey, if you're talking politics outside and you're pretty one-sided on something and the, the homeowner's on the other side of it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a little <laughs> tricky in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's whatever. Politics. Um, good. Well, everybody had a Christmas. It's, this is the first episode of 2021. 2021. Do you remember at, like the start of 2020? Like most years, We're people just are done like, with Christmas already? What was your favorite gift? Oh, yeah. What did you get? Um, what did you do? Shit. What was my favorite gift? Shit. Um, so I got a pair, a really nice pair of uh, Saxon. Timberland shoes for oh, my yeah. wife and a Raptors hoodie, which I, I had asked for. And um, so, we, so you're going to come to next year's Halloween looking like Drake? <gasps> yep. I got, a, I got a Drake outfit. That's true. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And some self tanner. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> nope. No, I'm not allowed nope. to say that. Yeah. Whoa. Um, so anyways, I, uh, yeah, I did, like, I don't know. Yeah, Christmas is obviously a little bit flat this year, but, like, we still haven't done gifts with, obviously, like, we opened up gifts from my wife's family. You didn't and try and, like, Zoom gift call? We didn't do any of that yet. So my dad was like, I'm going to drive up on Wednesday and drop off all the gifts and on your doorstep and then turn around and go home. And I was like, don't, don't do that. Just wait. We'll do it later. I don't care. But like, Almost for sure they're going to lift some restrictions on the 8th or something, right? I, who knows? Isn't that when they're supposed to? They're supposed to reassess on the I thought 15th. It was the 15th yeah. yeah. I think they should just open it up completely. Well, my dad was like, well, this ain't going to be over for a while. Like, why are we waiting? And I was like, well, I don't know, but I don't just want you to come drop the gifts off on the doorstep. Like, like I think Santa there should Claus. be a little bit more like, yeah. like you should be able to stay for a little bit. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? So I said, don't bother. So we haven't had, like, we still have a bunch of stuff that's not opened. So we, like, we've got little kids. So obviously it was still exciting from that perspective especially the three-year-old because that's like prime time still christmas, christmas santa claus yeah. you're all yeah. in it for that so it was fun with them but but that was it and then new year's eve was just me and my 14 year old sitting like i was working and he was like on his phone and we hung out until midnight i had a glass of it wasn't even champagne it was sparkling wine i saved the champagne for another night nice and uh i had that and he wouldn't even have a sip of it with me so ah uh, he wouldn't there we go no nope, he wouldn't so he had his first <laughs> sip of wine. He texted me. He was like, I can't get him to drink. I was like, <laughs> he's probably not old enough. Like, leave him alone. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, ah, yeah. oh, you're right. I'll have to be battling this the other way in a few years. Yeah. Never mind. Leave it alone for now. <laughs> so I had that. I had a, I had a, and I'm not a drinker. Oh, I don't do this normally, but I was like, for a few days, for some reason, I was like, well, I should sit down and have a scotch one of these nights. And it's, yeah. like, it's not my thing. But so I did on New Year's Eve from 1030 till whenever I finished that. And then I had my half a glass of, uh, Sparkling wine at midnight, and that was it. Poured yourself into bed. Right, yeah, and then, <laughs> then that was it. Right. And I slept off a hangover till today. I had two fingers like of scotch. One and shot of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> and the sparkling wine. That's cute. So. Um, smelled the cork. Yeah. <laughs> Can we all agree that, like, thank God that shit's over, though? 2021? It's a funny you thing. You 2020's over. 2020 is over? I'm yes. already wishing 2021 right. would be over, too. <laughs> it's a funny thing, right? Um, Business-wise, we had a pretty good year. Not bad, yep. But I could have done without the stress of getting there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we opened a second location. That's exciting. We had some growth in our business. That's exciting. We've added a few team members. That's exciting. Our TikTok is working finally. <laughs> right? Oh, our TikTok is off the rails right now. It's TikToking. Anyways, I what did you do like over Christmas? Built up our TikTok account. 20, That's right. Uh, 2020 has gone okay for us as a business, but yeah, for sure, there was some stuff that we missed out on. I would have liked to have done some trade shows. I would have liked to okay, travel yeah. a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So this is our topic today. But before we get there, uh, Bryce had some stuff. He wanted to give us our new segment. Is that right? Sure. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. For the moment of uselessness. <laughs> Bryce, we got no song for it yet. So you're just, we can play the start of this one. And that's it, because that's all we got now. So, Bryce, what do you got for us today? Okay, hang on. Uh, see, I had a little, like, 
segment all built up that we're talking through right oh, now. Oh, did you not know we Don't were worry. recording? No, I did. Oh. Here it okay. is. See? You'll see it. Okay. It's got a little Oh, like for the Instagram. Opening for the Instagram. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Oh, did you want me to actually play this music? That's okay. Then? I can do it's that. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can oh, turn it off now. Oh, we just talked through it. Just turn it off. Lord, turn it off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I think we are going to sunset the worldly news. We're going to sunset it, it sounds for like. real. Yeah. It's over. And we're working on new segments. And so if you uh, if you have I- ideas for segments, yeah. Send them along to us because we can get in on that. But yeah. until we get that figured out, we're just going to give you some useless information. I know one thing that we're going to have to do in 2021, which is arm wrestle. finally get the arm wrestle segment in. Done. Episode I've one. I've been training. <laughs> episode 128, which is my bicep measurement in millimeters. Ooh. Oh, episode 128. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I have no idea. I've been watching Kingdom. You're in big trouble. What's that? It's an MMA show. Oh yeah, it's got uh, on Netflix. It's got yeah. Nick Jonas in Nick it. Nick Jonas, uh, he gets kicked. An in the MMA head. show with Nick Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being punked right now? It turns out he's not the best fighter. He uh, Just turns out he shocker. won. Yeah, he won. Who one. is the then Moffats? He, like in <laughs> <laughs> Canadian superstars. Yeah. Justin Timberlake's on there. Boom, he's tough. I would put my money on Timberlake before yeah. those guys because he's excellent at everything. Yeah, the guy doesn't fail. So. Yeah. Anyway, tell me about the show. I'm intrigued. We got yeah, onto a new it. show too, but no, it's Bryce's segment. I was just we oh. Okay, yeah, okay. So Fine. here's uh <laughs> here's here's a few things that you might have missed in twenty twenty because of COVID. Does everybody remember that murder hornets made their way to the US, right? Yeah, yeah. what happened to those guys? Murder Hornets they vanished. Came out in May and disappeared. God, COVID so like it fixed so many things. Exactly. Got rid of the murder hornets. The flu got rid of the flu. Yeah. So in late October, Washington State destroyed the last murder hornet nest in the country. How do they know that? I don't know. They don't know that. They made it up. They did make it up. Uh, I thought I I just read an article like the other day that said that they were like they were expecting a resurgence of murder hornets, and now they're pissed. Now they're, okay, you don't the eradicate. Are oh pissed? yeah, they're pissed. <laughs> you don't eradicate a species of hornet, and then the remaining ones that are sitting by watching this shit don't come back like ten times stronger. <laughs> Mm. Or maybe they're like, we got this wrong. We're not ready yet. We're not we're ready. Not, <laughs> we're not ready for the whole North American invasion. Right. Back we're, to build the uh, war chest. That's right. what I mean, though. Build They'll the come back angrier. Chest. Yeah, but in a few years. When then what do you gone. call them? They went pretty aggressive with the name on the first time. What do you yeah, call a matter call murder, murder hornets? <laughs> I don't know. Did they kill anybody? I don't think so. This whole fear-mongering thing. I always thought murder hornets had to do with the fact that they like took over bees' nests. It probably does, but they, like it's it's. I don't uh, know anything about them. Sounds better to. They're big hornets. To think about it, being able to murder you, right? But yeah, they they wipe out honeybee colonies. That's the problem, right? They yeah. murder. They they go out like they're huge. Wade, go in there <laughs> and they're like <laughs> they're as big as your left thumb. That's pretty big. Around, <laughs> they're like the mafia. <laughs> okay, of hornets. So, anyways, they're bitchy bees. So it is. Okay, here's another thing that you guys might remember. People were obsessed with the Tiger King. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I it have no really desire. Good. Like, you watched the whole thing, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, wa- I don't, like, I played all of the episodes, but it was always, like, in the background as I was doing something else, yeah. like, working or whatever. So I never really paid too much attention. I enjoyed it, but I have no desire to go back and watch it again to make to see everything I missed. Right. It's you, co- missed, it, you missed a lot. Yeah, and I've asked my <laughs> wife, and she's got no interest either. So I just don't think it's going to happen for me. That's how I've been watching Shit's Creek. Oh, yeah. Just not watching it. Is that it? Good? like in the background? It's hilarious. Like every once in a while, there'll be a, a zinger that'll catch my attention. Yeah. So then I watch a bit. It's you always funny. just like, I say you always, I always Y'all. just automatically discount Canadian produced Oh, no, it's really good. I television, agree. right? It's yeah. just like, ah, oh, it's Canadian. It's probably going to be somewhat shitty. The, the no, only thing it's doing is Then it goes and sets a, a record for like, right. is it Emmys? Emmys. Emmys. One That's more Emmys Grammys. than any than any <laughs> show ever. <laughs> like, okay, well, maybe it's got something behind it. Yeah, it's pretty funny. So we're on to Ballers right now. You ever watch Ballers? The Rock. Mm. Mm. Dwayne, The Rock Johnson. On, so good. HBO. Yeah, I only have Netflix. I don't Hubo? Crave. Yeah, I ju- we, we got Crave. crave. And we yeah. just got Crave. And the first show we picked is Ballers. So it's good. Baller. Yeah, it is pretty baller. It's pretty baller. What Do I didn't like about Crave is that you have to pay for a subscription, and then they nickel and dime you for everything else you want. And Correct. Like, yeah. It's Amazon uh, Prime, you too. pissed me off. You want Crave? Yeah, I do want Crave. K-10 bucks. Yeah. You want the movies, though? I thought I got the... No, you don't get the movies. 
That's another ten bucks. What? Oh, uh, okay. I'll get I'll get the movies. But you want the really good movies though? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like I thought it was. Good. Well, you gotta have the other one. You gotta have stars <laughs> for that though. That's twenty five bucks. How, what the? What just happened here? <laughs> yeah. And oh, here, wait, and now I, I'm paying just as much for cable as I yeah, did before. Right. <laughs> yeah. For one channel and some movies. <laughs> Do I get to still keep my regular cable package too? Yeah. You. Yeah, you yeah. have to have that in order to have Crave. Do you? <laughs> I think so. Oh, for the love of God. Brutal. Anyway. Well, okay. You got more useless I facts? I got more. I got more. Megxit rocked the British royal family. Meghan oh, Markle yeah. and Prince. Oh, yeah. Whatever his name was. Right. Speaking of Megxit. Harry. Brexit actually just happened, right? And that's the next one. Brexit happened. It also actually went into effect this year. Yeah. now, January 1. Yep. just happened. This is all the stuff that flew under the radar. See? Do you remember the shitstorm they caused too, uh, Megan and Harry? Because they, they moved to what? Victoria. Yes. Yep. So they were going to move to Victorian Canada. And then as part of the Commonwealth, we were required to provide them security detail or something. So yeah, it was going we to cost. It was going to cost us a whole It was going to cost Canadians like freaking like a million bucks a year to give security detail to them. And people were like, yeah, no thanks. Go live somewhere else. We don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're like, okay. California then. <laughs> so then not our problem anymore. So yeah. now they're living in California and they just signed a multi-year deal with Netflix to produce a range of content. Of course they did. Still waiting on our multi-year deal. Oh, oh, speaking of which, I'm sure you got more facts. You got 13, right? I got a few more facts. I had, a dream, I had a dream <laughs> last night. signed a multi-year deal <laughs> no, with Netflix? <laughs> no, we didn't. But this reminded me of a dream I had last night. I had I a dream. Tooth put back I got <laughs> recruited last night. I got recruited by two university basketball teams mm. at the age of 39, going just about pushing 40. Wow. The, and Bruce will appreciate this. The University of Melbourne. I don't know if it oh. even, I don't, did it even, is it even called that? I no, don't know. Don't know, don't care. And the University of Georgia. Is it even called that? Don't know, don't, don't <laughs> care. <laughs> but they both sent me, bought, like it was like a subscription box, recruitment box, last night in my bed. And so I open it. And there was a hoodie from each of them. And I started digging through and there's like one of them sent like a collared shirt. They were like really ready to outfit me for my, for my, for your fresh speech. Dear, you? Yeah. For, yeah. For my, what do they call that when you commit for my commitment? Your speech. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the other one actually sent like clothes for my wife and my kids and all this stuff. And then like some letters, they were really wanting my services. And then the one coach showed up and, and he was sitting on my bed. This is so having good. a conversation with me. <laughs> they were trying to recruit me right then. I couldn't believe this was happening for me. I love it how, like, as a grown 39-year-old man, you have the coach talk to you in your dream while sitting on your bed. In my bed. You're not, like, at the kitchen table. Nope. Nope. You know? He crawled in. He took a seat <laughs> on the bed, and we had that discussion right Sit then. Sit down, son. So I, I don't know who I committed to, though. I, I woke up before that's, it all happened. That sounds like a great way to prank someone. I feel like this is ballers <laughs> making its way into my dream. Yeah, was like, <laughs> but anyways, it was pretty phenomenal. So if I'm walking with a bit of swagger today... Because I, I got a scholarship last night. <laughs> College basketball player. So. Uh, the broom challenge hoax went viral. Oh, yeah. Did anybody you do that? You did this one. I did the broom challenge. Yeah. And I was good at it. I was good at it, too. No surprise. I, caught, I got a few people at the restaurant with it. I just stood it up in the middle. Watched servers walk around it. Yeah. Beauty. That's good. That was good. Here's one that you probably didn't know. Poland accidentally invaded the Czech Republic in May. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like? What does that look like? How does uh, that work? So, um, let's see. The Polish military mistakenly invaded and briefly occupied territory in the Czech Republic. According to our information, the case was discussed by authorities responsible for border protection. So, basically, they moved the border slightly by accident. Yeah. I feel like they just like they went for lunch at IHOP in the Czech, right? Yeah, Czech exactly. IHOP, and they were, like parked all their vehicles there, and they're like they're invading. And they're like, oh, we're just having just we're having just, breakfast, we're just having some IHOP, guys. <laughs> whatever our bad, whatever Czech well, IHOP's called. Yeah, we'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> we're not the ones that do the invading. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's one that made it into our worldly news: a court ruled that Subway bread isn't actually bread. Yep, I like when these come out. There was years ago that they said Taco Bell beef wasn't beef either. It's like it's too much, beef. too much shit in it to call it meat. <laughs> like it's yeah, it's thief. It's, it's like thief. filler, it's not really filler beef. beef. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. What else do we got here? Here's a good one. You could scream in Iceland without making the trip. So in July 2020, Iceland's tourism board uh, offered a form of scream therapy where you could scream into your phone and they would play it somewhere in Iceland. I wonder how much money they made at that. Uh, probably a lot. 
They would let your scream loose on top of a picturesque mountaintop or No waterfall. chance that anybody actually did that. No chance that anybody took that phone, went, and played it on a mountaintop. That one right there made, like, this... This, this segment is named appropriately. <laughs> this is useless. <laughs> There's that one right there. There it is. Yep. That's, That's the namesake. Uh, an Austrian tourist damaged a 200-year-old statue while taking a photo with a selfie stick. They smashed it. I feel like that's probably happened a few times in the world, you know? And then finally, mystery seeds arrived from China. Oh, yeah. Whatever happened what with that? What were those? What Does was anybody the... know? No. No. Okay, so they think that it was part of an internet brushing scam where, like, Amazon oh. needs it needs them to fulfill orders in order to, like, yeah, confirm no, reviews. Yeah, yeah. So they just sent out a bunch of low items to random people. Right. Considered they were fulfilled orders. Yeah. And then faked a bunch of reviews. So no news on that one. No news on that one. But creepy though. Mm -hmm. It was weird. In the middle of, (laughs) especially the States being worried that China is going to take over. All of a sudden you start getting letters with seeds in them from China. And it's like, the hell is this going on here? (laughs) Yeah. And then finally. I would have planted one. It's a beanstalk. I'm planting (laughs) a beanstalk. (laughs) A puppy in Italy was born with green fur in October 2020. The Grinch. That was the Grinch puppy. Oh, real live Grinch. It was actually green, too. Had to do with some sort of chemical compound. Photosynthesis. Bright green, or are we talking like a hint of green? Right, like the the background that you can see right now. Really? Yeah. But it'll apparently wear off over time as he grows up. Good for that little guy. And that (laughs) is 2020 and the coronavirus, just in case you forgot. What's that? Nobody forgot. (laughs) Okay, so 2020... um, I don't know if one of our <laughs> was one of our New Year's, New Year's resolutions supposed to be waste less time in the podcast, get to the point sooner. Oh yeah, what time are we at? Twenty two minutes. Blown oh, that. Yeah, blown it. Simcoe's already gone. Yeah, everybody yeah. is. So, the topic today because it's the first episode of twenty twenty one. I feel like we should do this. Left. I feel like we should do this, and then we should restart the Instagram live so that people know that they can come back in for real content. Yeah, don't join the first notification. Join mm-hmm. the second one. Um. The topic today is basically how can 2020 guide us through 2021? What did we learn in 2020 that's going to help us make it through 2021? Nothing. Correct. <laughs> and this is why we wasted so much time. Good it's night, over. everybody. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow. No, but do you recall? Of course you do. Recall the start of 2020. Not the start, but the spring, early spring, March. March. How unbelievably scary and unpredictable that moment in time was. Mm -hmm. And there was not a Mm -hmm. damn thing that anybody felt they could do about it in 2021. It was like, shit, I don't know what we're in for. I guess we'll just hold on to the seat of our, like, seat of our pants? Yeah. Yeah, Is that a thing? 2020. What does that that even mean? Hold on to the seat of our pants. And so, and just kind of like, ah, the world just happened and we just went along for the ride and some of us made it and some of us didn't and that's how it went. But going into 2021, Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a bit more predictability here because it's looking like it'll probably be much of the same. Because the strong have survived. No, so here's the thing. There's actually been less deaths this year. There has been. Less people have died in 2020 than in 2019. Just like... We should fact check that. Fact check it. Look it up. New segment. (laughs) Fact Fact checking weight. I just like because every like the flu itself is way down, and coronavirus didn't replace the flu. The amount of deaths from coronavirus didn't replace the amount of deaths from flu, but flu is down because everybody was washing their hands and not coughing on each other. So there's just like less. No, I was doing that, and then we also weren't allowed to go out very much. So there's probably less people dying from extreme sports, like not as many people <laughs> have been skydiving, and not was as that many, one of the right? <laughs> is that one of the big ones? I don't know. I don't know if it's a big one. I'm just saying, like, people didn't go out as much. Yeah, I hear you. If a plane crashed, there was only two or three people on it, not 300. Yeah, and they were politicians, so (laughs) nobody batted an eye. (laughs) Anyways. Come on. So what we're doing here is, like, what did we learn from 2020? All the unpredictability, how that ended up playing out, what we learned from from what what the pandemic did to this industry. How can we use that to now plan for 2021, right? And so 2020, obviously, like, the world just kind of, like, Obviously, there was some conversation about it leading up to 20, or sorry, to March of this year. There was some yes. conversation about like, there's this pandemic, or like, mm-hmm. I don't even know if they're calling it a pandemic yet, but it was like, it's coming. It's like, there's cases here, but nobody really was taking it seriously yet. It was kind of yeah. like, yeah, okay, so H1N1 all over again, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
it wasn't until March where things started to like get affected in our industry when like people started phoning and canceling orders and correct a lot of phone calls are happening and people were kind of starting to panic a little bit. Yep. And so, um, that was a scary time for us in our business mm-hmm. as we were trying to open a second store, move this store, mm-hmm. obviously growing mm-hmm. our business, growing the cost of operating the business, and then having this scare be like, uh, there's a legitimate possibility that zero people do anything this year, that we all get locked in our homes for a full year and nobody builds a damn thing. Yep. That was scary. That seems crazy. Looking back. Now, right? Yeah. But Looking back, but I mean, like, I how are you to know? Yeah. When like, that happened how, in March, I was like, yep, no, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Nobody's going to go anywhere. I I legit thought, like, we won't, There, nobody's building decks this year. Like, so, how do you think, like, mm. in the middle of that fear, everybody's starting to, like, digest this and be like, the NBA canceled their season and, and NHL canceled their mm-hmm. season. And people are going, like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, this is real. This is big time. We're getting locked down. Like, this is, like, basically World War Three. Here we go. Nobody leaves their house. Well, you're not going to build a, a, a deck. <laughs> in and the middle so of that I, right. the reason i didn't think anybody was going to build was not because they were locked in their houses i thought it was because they wouldn't be sure of if they would have income like where the income was going to come from right everybody's getting sent home laid That's off or working from home suddenly and yeah turns out the government that? the government had so much money they just like <laughs> sprinkled it around everybody yep so thankfully free money th- thankfully for our industry because we, I think we always need to be aware of the fact that not everybody got the rebound that this industry did. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of businesses that are <gasps> struggling. What do you think was the hardest hit it. industry? I think yeah, it was the one that like, took it to... Like restaurants. You'd I have think restaurants one of the really hardest worst. ones. What about airlines? Well, airlines obviously have two, yeah. I mean, they always... They're, they're hardest hit every five years. doesn't matter what's going on. The thing with airlines... The, the reason I don't have a bunch of sympathy for airlines... Well, I didn't no. ask you for your sympathy. I just said, <laughs> <laughs> just like a financial but, figure, who was hit the hardest? Well, yeah, from doll like they had the most to lose because they rake in billions upon billions. Yeah. Whereas it's like local small businesses generally aren't. But I mean, there's some, so how do you define that? Some like, was Air Canada hit hard because they've lost $30 billion or was uh, the Gap hit hardest because they went out of business? I don't know if they yeah, one so went up. Like, like clothing some, stores some took of them a are major up. blow. Like yeah, Le retail. Chateau is gone. Right, retail took a, a major blow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe their dollar losses were greater, but they're they don't exist anymore. That's a pretty big kick in the pants right there. Yeah. Yep. So but I like I have more empathy, I think, for um restaurants because because they're typically locally owned. And yeah. even the franchise, even the big box, like not the boxes, yeah, the but franchise, the franchise restaurants are typically franchise. So there, there's a Still family behind it owned, that's getting yeah. impacted by that, right? If Walmart was to dry up, I wouldn't, I would probably like, there'd be a small like fireworks celebration in my backyard, potentially. I wouldn't feel too bad that the Waltons lost their four. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. Like they've had a good run. They've got money elsewhere. They're not, it's okay. But it sucks when like a small local coffee shop can't make it anymore. Mm-hmm. For sure. And so those are the ones I feel bad for. And obviously any social gathering type place was hit the hard and still continues to be hit hard. That's the, oh, yeah. that's the problem with them. Yeah, yeah. I was driving by like Sky Park the other day. I was like, how are they? God, they opened doing? at a terrible time, right? They opened yeah. right at the start of it. Same with that climbers. Yeah. That kids indoor park. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Ooh. So there's some industries and, and the, the tr- struggle is that they like, they've never had a chance to adapt. Every time they adapt, the goalposts get moved. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like spend money on doing like the Willow restaurant we were talking about mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago that spent all this money to kind of outfit their deck and their patio space, whatever, to follow the guidelines and be able to like serve customers outside under the tents only to have the goalposts get moved again. And then the city show up and be like, you can't do this. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, so anyway, not to get too off topic on that, but like thankfully our industry did see a rebound. This ended up surging in our industry. So yes. March scary, April still pretty scary. May, back to normal, June, July, crushing it. <laughs> like, yeah. So, but crushing it just enough to cover from the blows of March and April. Took some while to dig ourselves out of the hole for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But there was a rebound at least. So now when we're talking about going into 2021, what to expect, it's like, well, I'm not super scared that nobody's going to build decks this year anymore. Right. I've now learned that, like, oh, uh, what this means is that people are going to spend money like crazy, actually. Yeah. On their homes. Mm-hmm. It means they're not going anywhere, so they're investing in their own property. Yeah. And that looks to be the case for this year. Like, the vaccines are out, great, but that takes some time. Yeah. So chances are, at least for the first half of the summer, there's not going to be too much travel, ha- like, happening still. Yeah, I would say that 
most people probably aren't just going to jump onto a plane right away as soon as they can. Mm -hmm. Cause they're like, they've been fear mongered for a year. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, people yeah. are terrified of this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing too, is like, maybe people are realizing that, Hey, like, like <laughs> even if they're going to travel again at some point, it's still nice to have a backyard where you can do some shit. Yeah. Like I've spent t like tons of time in our backyard this year now. Yep. We went, I built this, some stuff for the kids. We used the deck more, you know, even in the winter, I've got a whole bunch of shit built in the backyard for kids now because we're not going anywhere. And I kind of got into that mode a little bit where it's yeah. like, oh no, we're going to do things here at home. When we want to go out, we're not going to go sledding or, or skating at a rink somewhere else. We're going to do that stuff in the backyard now. So I personally, I don't like that. And I haven't liked that for years. I know that it's the, I know it's necessary. I know that people have to do that. But when, when we were kids, we all went to the playground the central playground in town. And that was how you learned to socialize. You learned how to like stand up for yourself. You learned how to interact with other humans. Yep. And right now that's not happening. Like tons of my friends have kids and they all buy play structures and put them in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And so it's their, their kid has no opportunity to socialize. They just, they just hang out in their own backyard all the time. But I think that opportunity was taken away before they bought the playhouse, right? Like maybe they took the play, they bought the playhouse because they weren't allowed to go right. to the parks. The start of this thing, all right, the parks right. were shut down. I'm yeah. not talking about like 2020. I'm talking yeah, yeah. about society in general. Yeah. And we've been slowly pulling away from social gatherings. Then this mm -hmm. happens. And now it's like complete shut off. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're, kids are going to have some anxiety when they but have it's to just, start going back into the world again. It's just right? changing though. Crazy. Like how kids communicate with God, this fucking topic. Well, this deep. is everywhere. How kids like the world is just changing. Kids, Kids socialize and communicate a lot. It's just on through the their screen. phone and on their iPad now. Yep. Like when my when my son, fourteen year old son talks about his friends, he's talking about kids from Texas he's never met before. Yeah. That he plays Minecraft with. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's weird. But if you look back, like when we were outside playing Shinny, <laughs> I call Scott Kelly a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's my friend. He's <laughs> your friend. When we were playing Shinny in nineteen eighty eight or whatever, nineteen ninety two. Um, you know, we weren't doing the same types of activities that kids in 1954 were doing, like no. maybe to a certain extent, but just think shit changes. Yeah. yeah. Shit changes. Like they used to, they used to communicate or like socialize by helping out each other out on the farm and then like having a big communal supper and whatnot. Like we don't do that. We never did that when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. The foul supper. All that kind of stuff. Right. My, my, uh, my brother-in-law just posted a video on YouTube the other day because my wife's family, when they were younger, used to go on these, um, what do they call them? Wagon trail rides or whatever and so they, they had mentioned it before and i was like what, what is it kind of thing but never never actually spent too much time digging into what it was but essentially what it was was like they would hook up to, you know the old style horse wagons with a little yeah. like tarp over them whatever they would hook up and go on these trips like you remember the oregon trail game i was just gonna say <laughs> they were doing that for real they were playing <laughs> oregon trail for real you got dysentery <laughs> right <laughs> and so I saw this video and I was like, well, holy shit, this is actually a big deal. I was yeah. like, I wonder why they don't do it anymore. But th you just don't. It's not how people socialize anymore. But nobody used has to. horses. Right. But back then, everybody <laughs> had them. Right. <laughs> City so there was like, there's a hundred freaking carts and they would go from like the Willow Bunch area through the big muddy all the way down into Montana somewhere was this big trail thing and you'd camp out every night and there was like, crazy. what? <laughs> yeah. Let's do this. Legit. We yeah. should do this. So anyway, yeah, kids are, yeah, it sucks that we're all like home more now and we should do this. <laughs> <laughs> just blows fast it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I said the same thing. We just need some wagons and some horses. Yeah. Build, on them, it. build them out of tracks. Yeah. I'm yeah. on sponsored. Let's see what I can find. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know where the hell we got off there, but, um, so 2020. Yeah. We just so like, <laughs> I think we, we have a better understanding of what's going to go on. <laughs> Wagon <laughs> trail rides. Where? That, yeah. I think we Where? have a, a better understanding of what's going on in 2021, right? And so I... The uncertainty's I, gone I, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. There still is some, but we but you can plan for it now a little bit better. Correct. I think the building is still going to happen. I think yeah. that people are still going to be working in their yards and doing their pavers and decks and all that stuff. The uncertainty is going to be in the manufacturing still, probably. Right. So one of the biggest issues, once things got going... Uh, or maybe as a result of things getting going was the material shortages that everybody was affected by. Yep, and yeah. I know like I watched a lot of contractors on some of the Facebook groups really tie into their lumber yards uh, publicly That's this cool. year. And I always like, boy, I thought that was unfair. Mm -hmm. That was really unfair because it wasn't them either. 
and it wasn't the distributor and it wasn't the manufacturer. Like you can only do so much, right? Yeah. If, if you've reached your capacity on doing something. That's like a homeowner tying into the contractor that they didn't get the deck built in a day and a half. And it's like, well, it's just not possible. Like I don't, I don't have the capacity to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like have asking that people. same builder with one crew who builds a deck a day to be like, you have to build two decks a day now. Well, I need to hire more people. Now you can't hire more people. There they're aren't not, more they're not available. They're not yeah. around and you can't. Yeah. Well, or I can't build two decks a day. Yeah, exactly. Right. I can't get yeah. you the material. And you can't exactly. run the extruders faster. Nope. We'll build, like, build another plant. Yeah, okay, but that takes a year. That takes two years. Unless you're in China and you can build a hospital in a week. But then it right. collapses. <laughs> right. Yeah, and then right? it collapses. But then it collapses two <laughs> months later. So the, the material shortages was, was a well-known issue, and, and a lot of people, there was, it was frustrating for a lot of people. Yeah. It was out of everybody's control. Like, you can't, I can't, you can't even blame Trex. Like, Trex, like, how would you, you can't, you could not have forecasted that. Nope. And, and only a month that. before the boom, Everybody's worried about going out of business. So like, yeah, like it just, it was unfortunate, but the tricky thing is, is that the boom hasn't slowed down in a lot of areas, especially in the United States right now, where they're still pumping through building materials right now mm-hmm. to the extent that they, most manufacturers of a lot of materials haven't had the chance to restock the coffers. Yeah. But they're about to change leaders and that'll change because they're going to go, <laughs> right. They'll go Democrats and that'll, that'll yeah. slow everything down. Yeah. So without a chance to, to stock up again, well, as soon as the season gets underway and things bump again in, in April, May, then we're back to square one. Yeah. So how do things change? Well, from a planning perspective on the dealer distributor side, you can maybe plan to book a little bit more material. And, you know, maybe some of them are live just ended. Maybe with some of them, you, you know, some of the manufacturers maybe could do something to increase, increase their capacity, something. Like maybe they had some more room already in a place and they just had to add more extruders, fine. But if you got to set up a whole new warehouse that takes some time that's, yeah. not, that's not ready to go right away yeah i i think that everybody will be a little more patient this year as well and i Hopefully, think that's yeah. going to be a big takeaway from it right so that i believe that right down to the consumer they will be slightly less demanding mm-hmm. they'll they'll expect some delays right? hopefully yeah and that's one thing that i that, so for this year how to plan how, how can we be guided through 2021 well for the, for the contractors like now knowing that the material shortages are real, they were real, they are out of everybody's control. This year, we're going to run into some of that again, whether it's as, as bad or, or worse, I don't know. But you're going to have to plan a little bit better now, right? Like you well, can't walk in sometimes now and say, I need this delivered tomorrow. You might have to put your orders in a little bit earlier and give some people some time. Sure. At, and also communicate that to your customers as well. Be like, this is what we, this is what we've picked, and I'm yeah. going to go to the lumberyard, and I'm going to get an estimate, and I'm going to get an estimated time on this. I know that you want this built for the wedding that's in July, right? But like, I don't know if that's possible. That just doesn't happen anymore. It could yeah. if it's material that's on the ground. Like we, so we had a, a great conversation at this. Like our our booking season is over now, um, pretty much, right? You, I got a few more to do, but I'm seventy five percent done. Yeah. yeah. So we had a, a great discourse with our manufacturers in planning for the next year. But what that required of us was we had to sort of forecast our entire year out for them and be like, this is what we think we'll do all year. Usually we only have to pick half year, right? Mm-hmm. So we've made an effort. The distributors have made an effort. And so if somebody walks in and they want to build a deck that weekend, they still can. Yeah, They're just going to have to use what's on the ground though. Right. Right. And if it's something that has to be ordered, then like your guess is as good as mine when that's going to show up. Right. It be might not patient. might not show up. It might not show up. Like fascia yeah. from Fibron. That just didn't show up at the end of the year. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on next year. Yeah. You know, like So I'm expecting again, like I think the start of the year will be will be fine because like everything will it's, it's going to be the infill stuff later. Like the stuff you're able to plan and order early enough that the everybody could get it in the pipeline and have it, you know, ready to come fine. It's, it's going to be like, as the season goes on, things is going to get shorter and shorter again, I think. But we'll see. Yeah. Because who knows, like, who knows too, how, like, does the boom maintain? Does it increase? And if mm-hmm. it increases, then I don't think it increases. Again, I think but it, like, I think if anything, it slows down. I think there was, I think it'll like, I think it'll start high. Yeah, I think it'll start high and then it'll kind of taper off at the end of the year again. Yeah, and so you kind of alluded to... Because the travel will start to pick up, and I believe that that will start 
at the end of 2021. Right. I think people will start to travel and be like, I got the vaccine, I'm going. Well, and even that happened this year a little bit, right? Uh-huh. In August. Like all the politicians? When the campgrounds started to, yeah. oh. <laughs> when the campgrounds started to open up again. Yep. And and people did start to say like, okay, well, here's our chance to get a, a trip out of the way before September. But even our, our own staff. That's Certainly. all of a sudden we were all taking a quick vacation to be like, yeah. Things are going back to school right away. Who yep. knows what's happen? Let's That's get it. this one out of the way. We haven't gone anywhere yet this year. Yep. So that could happen again too. Yep. So we saw that little bit of a lull in August. Um, you alluded to the pricing thing too, with the, not only setting the expectation with your clients on timing. So yes, we're going to intend, we're going to schedule you in for June. However, be aware that we're kind of at the mercy of the manufacturer here if there's product yep. available. So understand that like we're ready June, but yep. expect that there could be some delays. But yep. the other part of that, that was a big issue in 2020 was commodity pricing because, and there was a lot of shitty opinions about this in these Facebook groups too, because (laughs) so guys, like some guys booked their whole year in advance. Like some guys are done. They've booked up all of 2021 already and taken deposits and committed to a price. Whoa. They've given the price $70,000. Sounds good. Sign the dot line. Here you go. Here's your 15 grand booked in. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But you're probably not ordering materials and sitting on it because most of these guys don't have anywhere to put that, mm-hmm. especially not 30 projects worth of stuff. Correct. So they order it when it gets close to the time. Well, the price of lumber now and the price of lumber in July could be vastly different one way or the other. You just don't know. And so last year, it wasn't anybody's, nobody had any reason to believe that the price of lumber was going to double. Right. So you booked this guy in at 70 grand and all of a sudden, you know, be, and your materials were going to be whatever, 50. And all of a sudden your materials are 60 because lumber all doubled. Yeah. Now you're in trouble. And now you're, you got a crew that's got to be on site for a month, like whatever so what it is you, for a month. What do you do? I what would is, go, what's well, your like best? I'd go back to the homeowner and just be like. Would you put that in? But like, so now is, now is your chance to think about that, right? So right. do you put so that in your contract? Like communicating pricing. Allow you to guide yourself here. You, uh, you do have to, you have to put that in your contract now. You have to. How do you not? Right. To say like, we're booked. Here's what this is going to cost today. We're mm-hmm. not building it today. We're building it in July. If commodity pricing gets loopy again and there's an increase of X amount, we're going to have to increase that X amount. You just, you have to, you have to cover your own. And product. I think. And so play it the other way too then. I think if I customer. was writing the contract, I would write it that you're going to pay market value. And so yeah, if it goes value. down, exactly. yeah. it all also go down on that price, right? Mm-hmm. I, I've quoted yeah. it at this much for uh two by 10. And if my two by tens drop, I'm passing that along to you. I don't. And I think that's the only way you can. I think that's the only way you can present that to the customer. Unless you gamble and put a fixed cost like at the high end, right? You could, but like, like how 15%. So how do you do that? So 50, exactly. So 15%, like 15%. But last year it doubled. It doubled. Yes. So what is so the like? But what if it goes down, right? And like that's what I said. That. There's a lot of shitty comments in the Facebook groups because a lot of guys were like, well, you should like, you got to eat that because you committed to a price. And you should have had that built into your price. How do you build in you for can. that amount of a swing? You can't. You can build price. in 10% swing for yeah. sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah you yeah. double you on things. You is can. like, you, come on. If you're building that in your price, you are potentially pricing yourself out of the market too at the same time. Mm-hmm. But even if you did build that into your price. Yep. Yeah. And so then you normally have a very large profit that you can absorb a loss here and there, but you want to absorb that. So your profit is, uh, your net profit is 12%. All the time, that's what you normally do. But now you're now you're just okay taking four percent because the price has changed. And you're like, yeah, I can eat it, but yeah, but you've Why? you've you've yeah literally adjusted your entire business to be a third less or two thirds less profitable mm-hmm. because you have the attitude that you're just supposed to eat it. I yeah, well, I, like, there's no way I would do that. Even if it's not losing, right? Like even if it's not putting you in the red, even if it's putting you way less in the black, it's still not a good thing. You should still shouldn't be okay with that. Yeah. I like, I honestly believe that what I would do is I would, so say you have written the contract and it's done and it says it's a fixed price. I would go back to that homeowner and I would sit down with them at the table, same place you sat when you negotiated the contract the first time. And I would go through it and just be like, here it is. This is what it's going to cost me. This is what I'm going to lose. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this. I'm not doing it for fun. I'm doing because my job. Right. And so let's go through this. And if they weren't reasonable if they wouldn't budge i would Mm -hmm. give them their deposit back and i would walk from that job right i'd be like here's your money back i i can't do this for the price i told you i would and i'm really sorry here you go because they're not going to get it from anybody else at that price and if you're that like if you do that 
they might just realize mm. that they're mm-hmm. not going to get it from anybody else. And yeah. then they take you to court and it's like, whatever, go to court, fight them. Mm-hmm. But like, I would just, I would just say like, I simply can't do it for this. Maybe the material cost, maybe I'm not profitable on the material now. Maybe I just say to them, listen, the lumber has doubled. I obviously had some profit built into that. I yeah. can't, I can't do this anymore for that price. Here's the material list. You go buy the material mm, mm-hmm. and I'll pick it up and have it delivered or whatever. Like I would try to compromise with them somehow, but I would just have an honest conversation and be like, and if, and if they were refusing to work with me, then I would give them their money back. Mm-hmm. That is like, that's an option for people who might yes. have space. Like if a, if a customer pushes back and says, absolutely not, I'm not leaving this price open ended. It's like, okay, I can buy the material today if you like, but it's like, it's gotta be stored on site. Oh yeah, it's got to be stored sure. on site. Sure, so you have a garage to put it because some customers do that. Sure. We obviously have better pricing at the end of the year when you know when we're trying to clear out some inventory and whatnot. There's deals to be had at the end of the year, mm-hmm. just before Christmas there, and we have a number of customers that'll come in and buy their stuff now, put it in the garage, even though mm-hmm. they're not planning on building it to the spring because they know they can save four grand. Yeah, we on their that. twenty thousand dollar deck. We did that for four or five. Sorry, I was reading the comments. Did you just say that we did that for four or five people this year? Yeah, they came so in the, yeah. and they were like, "Well, I'll buy it right now." And we'll take it. I know I'm going to build my deck next year. It's on sale. Railing's on sale. Decking's on sale. Lumber's on sale. No problem. I'll buy it. And so they did. And they're avoiding the uncertainty too, because at that time when they're buying it, there's a good chance, you know, if it's in December, we might start to get an idea. But if it's before that, we don't know for sure what prices are going to be in in mm-hmm. the spring, but it's pretty freaking rare for them to go down. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's probably going to go up. Plus it's on sale. So you kind of like double whammy, save money as long as you have somewhere to put it. So if somebody's really that adverse to the risk of, Prices potentially increasing, then sure buy it now. But we have to have a we have to have a storage strategy. Where's it going to go? Right. I can't, I can't sit on it. We like, can't store it because we have new stuff coming in and lots of it. Right. But, but the contractor, even, even I mean, like yeah, the even, contractor can't because he he's got like a lo- a small contractor would have a trailer and a home office. Mm-hmm. Even a big contractor probably doesn't have a big warehouse of, you know, some would some would have rooms, but that'd be the That'd be the rarity. Like, that'd be the odd man. Like, most wouldn't have the the space to put 30 projects worth of stuff piled up and wait for it. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, So, anyway, there there has to be that clause in there. The comments in the the Instagram here are agreeing with us. Illuminated Balustrade says, when I used to run a decking company, I used to say this price is only valid for 90 days. Prices may change should material costs change. And so, I think that 90 days is a pretty pretty long... That's a long... Long one, even in the commodity world, because they can change monthly... Mm-hmm. This commodities year, do change weekly. Like we get weekly updates on our commodities, but yep. uh, we purchase out further than that. So we're usually pretty good to hold our commodity prices for 30 days because we purchase 30 at days. That. Yeah. And because of the, and there's going to be different programs and places here from all the different mills and distributors, but with ours, the way, because prices were so high before Christmas on lumber, everybody yeah. was a little apprehensive to go book a bunch of lumber at that price, knowing that it could fall off. So Mm-hmm. The, the entire logistics changes chain was like, well, we have to do something. We have to do something to give the dealer channel the confidence to place orders right now because if they don't place the orders, then the distributor can't place the order. And if the distributor doesn't place the order, then the treatment plant doesn't place the order. And if the treatment plant doesn't place the order, then the mill doesn't place the right. order. And then we're, then we're in a real bad situation yeah. come May, March. So they had to put in, everybody had to get like, get, creative, get into their man. brains and get creative with how you price this this year. So now we've got this rolling kind of averages by quarter. So the 90 days thing probably is safe this year. You can probably, we can probably give you a price that we know will be good for 90 days because that's how we're mm-hmm. getting the pricing now. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's tricky, but, um, but it's you got to have those clauses <laughs> in there. Different. You have to. Yeah. Uh, Demo labor says commodity pricing needs to be added in the contract clause somewhere. Yeah. And so. I don't know that I would have ever considered that before, but, but I do now. Well, because before, like, like Bryce said before, you put it, you add in 15%, you probably got it covered. Like it's probably not going to swing so much from one month to the next that yeah, usually, it's uncontrollable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But last year it did. And and this year, like we don't know for sure, but it could happen again. Certainly it could. Because if the plants make whatever, a billion board feet of fence boards and the treated fencing goes off the rails like it did last year. Yeah. Like we sold as many fence boards in May in 2020, we sold as many fence boards in May as we did in 2019, the whole year. <laughs> and so if that happens again, yeah. plan for that, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And then you're doing your booking numbers. It's like, how much, how many fence boards should I buy? It's like 13 lifts, 13 lifts, 13 lifts, 40 lifts. 
Well, yeah. now what? Are we going to do 40 lifts again? Are we going to do 13 lifts again? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, I don't know. So good luck. Anyways, if the, if the, the average guy's got less than two thumbs, <laughs> exactly. just take the average, <laughs> just take the average 13. It is. If the, like if the market goes off, like it did again last year, will the treatment plant have enough fence boards to cover that? Probably not. So is the lumber going to spike in the middle of the year? Probably. Like it's probably I mean, going to jump again. Generally does any, anyway, cause you're going to be it? short. Yeah, usually pretty steady because like the purchases are usually pretty flat. Oh, okay. Year over year. Yeah. But if if the supplier runs out of material and they're like, we're out of material, then they can charge more mm-hmm. and you'll pay more because you can't get it. So anyways. It's tricky. I that would tricky. not have I would not have had a clause, a commodity clause in before. But what, this is how 2020 can guide us. It's like, well, mm-hmm. now you need to put that in there. Make sure you have That's it. how 2020 guides us. Because now we know that a fluctuation like that is possible. Yeah. Because you wouldn't have guessed that before. Yeah. So there you go. Material shortages and, and pricing um, need to be communicated to your clients. Just better on communication, paper. it seems like. <laughs> yeah. And contractors are bad at that. Yeah. Just generally, right? And it's like. Well, and you couldn't like. They, I'm not any better. Like we're, they're they're even further removed from knowing what's coming down the pipe than we would be, mm-hmm. right? Like we get it, we pass that information to the contractor, and we wait for it from from above us. But the contractors are they're out building all the time. They're not on the phone finding out what lumber is about to do, right. right? Like they expect to be updated when from the lumberyard if something happens. They're not proactively looking for that, right? Mm-hmm. And so it would have caught everybody off guard last year, and it's frustrating for them too because, like I said, the, the homeowner doesn't know, but neither did the contractor last year know that. Mm-hmm. things were surging and material was short and it's going to take me eight weeks to get my track decking when I come to order it. Like it usually, like usually I show up and I get it. Yep. <laughs> so right. how exactly like that wouldn't even be in your mind. So this year going into 2021, like I said, you're just gonna have to plan everything a little bit better. Order mm-hmm. that deck package, mm-hmm. not the day before you need it, order it a few weeks out to make sure that if there's some hiccups, there's more time to absorb and make things happen before you absolutely need it. And I think if you're, if you also communicate with your with your lumber yard properly, they would be okay with that. I know if I had a contractor that walked in and was like, listen, I'm going to order this material. It was the start of June. I plan to build this thing in July. Are you okay to, to order that material right now and bring it in for me? If it was one of the guys that shopped with us all the time, yeah. I absolutely would because I wouldn't want that pressure at the end of June to try and get it here for July and then, and then let them down. Mm-hmm. I would appreciate the six week lead time or eight week lead time on that order from a contractor. And so if he walked in and was like, this is what I want and I want to deliver it in mid July. Can we get this ordered? Yep. You bet. And then if it showed up early and I had to pay for it and it sat in the yard, that'd be okay. Or as a lumber yard, you can ask him for a deposit on that. But if he's one of your main contractors, you probably aren't anyways. Right. So, yeah. but I mean, we had a I truck, we had, a, we, we closed for Christmas on what the 18th was uh, Friday, 19th, 18th, 19th? 18th. Yeah. We had a truck show up on the 22nd, the yeah. day you came in the, the Tuesday yeah. after yeah, to unload it because it like, it got here after we closed, unfortunately. So Wade came to unload that truck and it's like that truck had stuff on it that some contractors were waiting for from June months, <laughs> months yeah. prior August. And we finally just caught up just three crazy. days before Christmas. Crazy. So anyway, planning is going to communicating, planning, communicating. Finkleberry in the chat says, I got to do that pre-order for April. So good. Yeah. Come in, do it. Um, we're back open Monday. So start planning for Boy, the spring. I'm going to have to have a retraining day. Um, I haven't done much for yourself. <laughs> yeah. As far as the business, like, Ooh boy, I like, I took some time off. Checked out. I did. <laughs> Another thing I want to talk about was, um, for most contract, I don't know if I should say most. For a lot of contractors, they're f- they focus on growth so to some extent. They want to grow their business every year. They want to do more decks, or they want to add a crew, or they want to become more profitable, or whatever it takes. Right? Mm-hmm. Some are fine, just being like, "I'm happy with the one crew. I make a good living. I'm good. Mm-hmm. I'm, I just want to do what I'm doing." But for those that want to grow, um, I imagine some of them probably wanted to grow in 2020 and then got freaked out at the start of the year. They're like, not the time. Yeah. I remember guys back then like having to let their guys go back in March or in April or whatever. Like they were, or they usually bring the guys back in April, but they didn't until May this year. Just, there was a lot of fear. And so for 2020, if you're planning, if you were planning on doing some growth in 2020 and you didn't because you weren't confident enough, mm-hmm. understandably to make the commitments to do that, 
well, I think this year might be the year because then they got caught with their pants down mm -hmm. like we all did with the surge of business and you couldn't take advantage of it. You yeah. wanted to grow. You had all the opportunity yeah. and you didn't, weren't able to get that second crew going because mm -hmm. of what happened earlier in the spring. This year, now you got some time to plan, like, and the opportunity is going to be there again, it looks like. Yep. And I think you should maybe get after this right away with like running some 100%. ads. 100%. Like running some ads and now. let's try and secure some deposits. <laughs> yeah. And like, let's get some business lined up. Let's get your portfolio lined up. Why not? Everybody's like, January is a tough month to sell in, but you could start to run some ads. Yeah. Get ready. And it's, it's only a tough month to sell in because people aren't, they're not going to be thinking about that because it's not naturally topical right now. Right. You have to help them think about it. There's also the credit card statements. Like December is usually yeah. a tough. There's for sure. You know a what I mean? Like everybody wants yeah. to strap down in January because they just spent a bunch of money. They're going to be more fiscal. They got resolutions in place now. Blah 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 blah. But if they know they're doing a decade, <laughs> wait till Eat February. Better, work <laughs> out, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah, tough to sell cakes right now. But sometimes <laughs> all you have resolution. to do Eat more all you have to do sometimes is make them aware that you're even open and ready to do this. Yeah. Like, yeah. yes, we can start planning right now. Yeah. No, no, I'm not in Maui at the moment. <laughs> I'm here and I'm like, my business is operating right now. Reluctantly. Oh. So I'm reluctantly here. <laughs> right. So sometimes you got to, like, maybe it seems illogical to do some marketing in January, but um, you might know. be able to get some jobs booked. And I know some guys are saying now too, like, we're already booked till June or August or so the year right now. So add a second crew right now. Do that right now. Add a second crew. Now's yeah, the just time. Just do it temporary. Like, why not plan for That's it? That's the thing. You, especially with contracting, you can always scale back. Yeah. Like, yes, it sucks to let guys go. But if the work's not there, the work's not there. But the work will be there this year. So take advantage of it while you can. Yeah. Like the, the work's going to be throwing itself at you. You have like increase your capacity if that's what you're wanting to do with your business. How's, like your, you, how's your chance? It's like me walking down the strip. People throwing themselves at me. Is that what happens? Unbelievable. That's crazy. Yeah. Ask I Kevin. think. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think this is the year that you <laughs> like this. This sounds crazy, but some people don't do it. Take deposits. Because oh, yeah. again, this year is going to get crazy again and take money. there's going to be a lot of people phoning you and you need to know, like you can't have a whole bunch of disruptions or um, <gasps> shuffling in your calendar when you're going to be as busy mm -hmm. as you're about to be. So you want to make sure that people that have booked in with you are serious about it and yeah. you don't want to have somebody yeah. like canceling three days before and then you're like, well, frick, I had all these God jobs I could have done, but now you've left it too late. You've done it again. What? Um, 30 minutes. So, so take deposits and make sure people are serious. In a uh, in a quick segue to that, to tie that in, MG Dex charged for did I, did we talk about this on the podcast already this year, or did we Not talk that about I... that in person? No. So MG Dex started charging for um, for estimates this year, and he said he loved it. At first, he was really frustrated because he didn't get as many projects, but he said his conversion rate was like over ninety percent. The ones, oh, yeah. That and so save it's so like, much time. So you save so much time. And so like in the old take deposits, it's like charge for estimates this year and take deposits because your time is going to be as valuable as ever this year. Mm -hmm. And so let's not have guys or homeowners wasting your time. Right. Yeah. Taking like, oh yeah, well, but I think I want to do a deck that's like this and it's... Qualify your clients. 75 wide by 400 out and with a louvered roof system and I want to do it with like for five grand. Peace. There's always pushback when, we, when this topic comes up about whether you should charge for your consultations. Not for and me. I have no pushback on this. There is, I, I'm honest to God, there's been zero people that have made the decision to do that that have ever regretted it and went back the other way. Nope. And we, we often hear from these people that like, I can't remember if it was him or somebody else that actually thanked us. Like, thanks for even like putting that in my head. Mm -hmm. um, because I did it and <laughs> way less stress. My light, like I had so much more time. The people I talked to weren't just like wasting my time. Yep. Like best decision I've ever made yeah. is what you hear over and over again. But there's still people that are just, they don't have the confidence to do it yet. Like they'll get there at some point. But and it's not, a, it's not a perfect transition. You don't charge for estimates and then all of a sudden you're banging off 40 estimates like you were the year before. Yeah. You need to know that when you start to do that, you're only going to get 10 or 12. Right. But you will land nine. eight or nine of those yeah. jobs. No problem. Right? Do you want an 80%? But think about that Do you though. want an 80% conversion rate or do you if want your a phone five is going to ring? If your phone's going to ring 40 times a week and you're going to go do an on-site estimate for every single one of those and it's going to take you one hour, which is conservative, 
not including the time it's going to take to actually do the estimate. So There's just the time going call, to site. Call it an hour or an hour and a half to do the estimate. And then it's an hour for sure. Well, sorry, it's an hour and a half on site because you drive time and spend some time there. Mm. And then you have an hour estimate for sure. Yep. Right? So you're two and a half hours for every job you do, every job you estimate. Mm-hmm. Minimum. So for simple math, two hours, 40 times, you're going to spend 80 hours a week. That's how much work you have and you wonder why you're behind. Right. So 80 hour commitment and you're going to win, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, 30% of those jobs. If you're lucky, you'll yeah. get 12 of those jobs. If you're damn good, you'll get 12 of those jobs. Yeah. Or you can do, you can start charging for the for the estimate and 25 of those 40 are going to hang up and be like, I, I'm not paying for that. Good luck with that. 15 Thanks. of them will pay your $100 fee. And you'll win 90% of those. Yeah. Yeah. And you're in the same ball game with less work. So now you've got 13 or 14 jobs that you sold. You actually booked more work. Yep. Yeah. For less time. Talking to less people and you only spent 30 hours, not 80 Mm -hmm. doing it. And booked more work because the ones that you actually did to code talk to and would pay you for your time, you were able to give more attention to better service, turn stuff around for them faster. Mm Mm-hmm. And they were the ones who wanted to talk to you in the first place. Like, and they're probably better projects. Yes, please. Well, the people are yeah. better. The people are better yeah. to work for, for sure. Exactly. Because they're already willing to pay you before you've even really done anything they're mm-hmm. paying you. So anyways, I, like, it's, uh, yep. I would, I would do that. You'd do it? <laughs> <laughs> Take deposits. If I was a contractor deposits. listening to this right now, I'd be like, oh, that's a really good idea. I'm going to do that now. Take deposits. Charge for estimates this year. This is the year. It wasn't even on our thing, but like, now's the time. Yep. Now's the time because your phone's going to be ringing off the hook. You're worried about not having enough work. Uh, no, you can So you can filter some people out and still be busy. And Marson had set this all up on his website. And so you just like log in, click a spot on the calendar. It actually, so what happened was people phoned and they were like, I want an estimate. And he was like, sounds good. Go to my website, log on to the calendar, book your time. I'll show up. Yeah. Now your phone calls are less. Like. Yeah. Oh, build these business processes. That's like, that's all it is. Right. Um, another thing we can plan for now that we didn't know in 2020 was the trade show thing. So there's kind of two kinds of them, I guess that we do the ones that we go to acquire business from. So like our local home and garden shows, and then the networking shows we go to as well. This, I think I'm talking more about the local ones here that you might get business from. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2020, it was the it was the worst of all the scenarios because we did all the work to get ready for them and, and they got canceled last minute. Yeah, because they all happened in March. And so yeah. we were ready, which is shocking because we're usually never ready for things like that. <laughs> right. It's because you had something else, though, going on in the background. Yeah. <laughs> no, so were, this year we can just go into the this. displays from last year. We, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We built them a year in advance. Uh, this year we can go into the spring safely knowing that that's not going to require any of our time. Mm-hmm. And we can also go in safely knowing that we're going to get zero jobs from trade shows this year. Yep. So therefore, we now can place the money and the time and the effort into something else. Mm-hmm. Go find the people somewhere else. And you know that now. Yep. Last year, we didn't. Last year, we were like, what's going to happen? And then it got canceled. I was like, wow, shit, what are we going to do? And so you've got that knowledge now that that's not going to... And even if they were to happen, even if you're in a market that's somewhere that's like not locked down as much as it is here, and they're like, yeah, we're going to do a home show in March. Nobody's going to it, okay? Mm-hmm. So it's, It will be poorly attended. So mm-hmm. don't... Like, not to shit over the shows, but like, don't bother going to those unless it's a sweetheart deal. But if they're still trying to charge you the same old booth fee that you've always paid, yeah. right? Blah, nope. Yeah, don't do that because you're not getting the same old traffic. No, nope, yeah. you're not. So take that money, put some effort into something else. But at least now you know that you can do that in advance. The last thing I had on here was like this whole thing that we we were all forced to get a little bit creative back in the spring, and I think some people probably when things got back to normal a little bit also went back to their normal Mm, a little bit too. mm -hmm. But back in the spring, people were trying to think like, how do I talk and do estimates and communicate with my customers without being at their house like I used to be all the time? And so all of a sudden people are starting to implement these Zoom meetings or these different like video calls or whatever, doing things by proxy, keeping distance a little bit. That stuff doesn't have to go away. No. Now you know how to do it. You were forced to learn how to do it. You might have even found some efficiencies in doing it. Mm Mm-hmm. You might have learned that, hey, I don't actually have to go and sit and talk to the customer at his house for an hour. I don't, that doesn't need to, that's not a required step for this. I can go measure that thing on my own in my peace and quiet, go back and we can communicate via email or a video chat. 
Yeah. Where we're much more likely to be a bit more concise. We've eliminated the travel time out of it. We've eliminated the fuel costs and the mm-hmm. wear and tear in your vehicle to go. Like, mm-hmm. well, you might still have to go measure anyway, but but you can leave that measurement part till later too now once you've actually booked the job if you want to. Um, so there might be some efficiencies in that that, hey, let's, why, like, why let them go? Just because maybe you're allowed to go back into somebody's house to go do an estimate this year yeah. doesn't mean that you necessarily should. You might have found a more efficient way to do it. I think the biggest thing that I've noticed is a digital docu signing. Yeah. Is like really starting to take off with age groups that I never thought it would take off with. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, it should have been done years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I hate doing? Fax machines. I hate scanning in and emailing something uh, back to somebody. Right. I don't know why. It really doesn't take that much much effort. But when somebody sends me, like, emails me a document, it's like, you just print that out, sign it, fill it out, and send it back. That'd be great. And you're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> I can print it, I'll fill it out, but for some reason, scanning it, saving it, naming it, and sending it back to you bothers me. Yeah. So the DocuSign? DocuSign. Great. Yeah. Oh, I just have to Digital open it and click a thing, and it puts my name in there? Sign me up for some more of that. Right? I wonder if there will be any liability issues with that later on. Like, I mean, is it any different than signing a piece of paper? I don't know. I know that I read papers that I print off. I read those a little bit closer than anything I click on. <laughs> That's a you problem. <laughs> Potentially, but there's actually there's actually probably an extra level of security there because yeah. you have to, in order to get to that document, you have to be able to, you have to sign in through your credentials to get into your email in the first place. Yeah. If this is just a print a piece of paper, mm-hmm. I anybody could sign that. Yep. So nice. anyway, I don't know. It seems to be something that legally is. Okay. Yeah. Um, comments. Quigley Cable Rail. The email and phone inquiries have dropped dras- drastically. Yep. Um, is he talking about like this year versus last year? I'm not sure what he's referring to, but uh, he would be, if that's the case, he would be in the, uh, he, that's not the norm from the guys that I've talked to and seen from. A lot of guys are saying like, this is like, I'm mm-hmm. booked up already, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Until whenever. S- so. Seems fairly strong for 2021 around here. So. Yeah, so, um, but I mean, the true test will be now. Like, yes, some people do some planning before the end of the year, and they have their ducks in a row, and while everybody else is Christmas shopping, they're planning out their <laughs> year, their next mm-hmm. year. But mm-hmm. for the most part, the real telltale sign will be in the next couple months here. Um, when your phones are ringing, how, how long are guys getting booked up? Because I know last year, like, guys were going into, you know, April without any jobs. And normally, by that right. time, they're booked up till June, July minimum. Mm-hmm. And last year was like, shit. And then all of a sudden it came fast, like hot and heavy at the end of April. All of a sudden the phone really started ringing. Then they got booked up. Yep. But that wasn't normal. So hopefully this year the phone starts to ring for guys and they get um, they get booked up before they're ready to start swinging the hammer outside. Yep. So there it is, I guess, hey? How 2020 can help guide us through 2021. I think there's some good stuff in there. We're I don't know that wiser. there's an hour and eight minutes of it. Nope. No, the first 25 is garbage. Yeah. We should work on that. We could just cut it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just clip it out. I'll just post the good stuff. <laughs> doesn't take that much effort. Um, so, yeah, if there's any uh, any people out there that have ideas for segments for us or, or even topics, because yeah. you know what? We're 111 in. <sighs> even if they seem like if you got some topics. To you, yeah, like even if yeah. you think they're dumb, just send them. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We're out. The other thing is too, we're going to start regurgitating some stuff and having conversations over again because even somebody that signs up for the podcast now mm-hmm. is unlikely to scroll back through two years of podcasts to go back and try to find the railing episode. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or the foundation episode. Yeah. Um, the other thing is we'll have coming up right away is that the new lineups of decking from people are, it's all out there now. Like we're, we know what's coming. I don't think there's a ton of changes, but there's some changes we can talk about. So we'll do some of the, um, yeah, we could the decking lineups coming up. Here in review for the guys coming up. Like, be like, this is what you're going to see from these companies. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Not a ton, uh, not a ton of changes from the big guy trucks. Very minor changes from Fibron. A little bit more from Timber Deck. But those kinds of things we can do an episode about and um, kind of Yeah, get we did the decorators one, but we did that in the, we did that in the fall. Correct. Yeah. So we could do that at the spring to get that kicked off. Talk about all the stuff that we're not going to have. Yeah. Talk about all the stuff we're not going to have. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you're a person who thinks you can benefit from uh, catching some ears in this podcast, we have our promotional kit out there. If you're interested in sponsoring the podcast, mm-hmm. shoot me an email, shane at 
tuds.ca, T-U-D-S.ca. And I can send it over to you if you'd like to sponsor the podcast. We've Great email interest, address. So good job, bud. Nice and shortened, that's for sure. Anyways, everybody, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. Uh, happy Thank New Year. for listening to the ultimate deck podcast. Now you know what we're about. Check the site. Come and shop. UltimateDeckShop.com. Hit us right away for sponsorships. So tell us if you want to collaborate. Let's go. Check us out on any social networks. Thank you for listening.